All right. Good morning, folks, from the guy who brought you big leads. Today, we're going to talk about the Be Well Factory. Uh, and this is a cool one. I'm really excited about this. We do contract manufacturing, custom formulation, and private labeling because health is wealth. Uh, it's an off-market lead and one that I'm I'm pretty excited to share with you. So uh, we got myself, uh, you know me, I know you, uh, big happy family here. And I am so fortunate and excited because I've been looking for an opportunity to partner with this individual since I had the pleasure of meeting him last year in Atlanta. This is my brother, Oscar, and he brings a lot of wonderful stuff to this space. Uh, we talked a bit about me uh, last time I was on here presenting big leads to you folks. I'm the vision and strategy guy, the growth and scale guy. I've done some really fun stuff with a lot of clients whom I love. Uh, and that's particularly salient to the deal this morning. A lot of high-end luxury health and wellness folks in the spa space, Ritz Carlton, uh, Marriott Bonvoy, uh, Beauty Counter, um, some really fun things, uh, people I love. And then you got this guy right here. Uh, tactical execution, subject matter expertise, uh, seasoned manufacturing uh, professional, over 20 years of experience, um, certified Lean Six Sigma Black Belt, three lean management system implementations under his belt. This guy's a beast. What more can I say? So today, the Be Well Factory, as I sort of introduced, we specialize in creating high quality personal care products through contract manufacturing, custom formulation, and private labeling. And we offer a range of services, including unique beauty products, tailored to client needs, uh, providing pre-formulated, ready-to-use professional products for spas and customers. Uh, we are CGMP compliant. Uh, and with that comes some rigorous and beautiful quality control that is sort of benchmarked to the space. And we also provide a low minimum orders, uh, competitive pricing and on-time delivery. Turnaround is key in this space. We've been in business for 38 years. Our whole sort of mantra at this point in time is low margin. Uh, excuse me, low volume, high margin. Uh, we've got 87 SKUs. Uh, we have a GM in place, uh, clients of over 15 years, uh, which can be nuanced. We'll talk about that in a second. We own the real estate and we have immediate M&A opportunities. Uh, our seller has colleagues who are really interested in understanding how this goes because they'd like to retire. And more importantly, uh, they're in the space too. Good fit ancillary capabilities for things that would make sense uh, in an intentional rollup of this nature. There is one small fly on this deal though. For those who are looking at the bottom left of the screen, this graph is going in the wrong direction. We just got to turn that around, just flip it. And as tempting as it was to just screenshot this slide and put it in, in the reverse it's not always that easy uh, in the world of business, but Oscar and I, we don't think it's going to be that hard. And we'll talk to you more about that. So the quick hits, our core business, um, customer base, sales and marketing, competitive advantages. We sort of went through a lot of this. Uh, and this is really because I, you know, I probably just need a slide that does only the market analysis. That's this deal in the top, right? Something that is worth mentioning, our seller really considers this business. She considers it that we are in a very Goldilocks space, just given our size and given the nature of the industry. We'll go through some of those growth trends in a second. Uh, Oscar and I agree. It's sort of got a really niche Goldilocks appeal to it. And that sort of reflects when you take a little bit of a step back and look at the market analysis for other deals that are equitably sized in terms of team, location, reach, and revenue. Uh, we've got a few to the right, and it sort of gives that visual of, you know, where uh, we'd expect to to play and win uh, when we think about the larger market and larger rollups. So the market overview, uh, personal care products growing at 4.3, uh, private label trends growing at 5.1, and the contract manufacturing space growing at 6.2. This is meaningful because it gives us a chance to really dial in where we make our money currently and where we might be best served to focus as we move forward. So a little bit about moving forward. We've got a growth strategy, four pillars that are really meaningful for the work we intend to do here. First, sales. We saw the decline in revenue. We saw that dip. That is because we lost two of our bigger clients. It speaks to a overly concentrated customer mix. 
Um, but also to what our seller has quite candidly said, you know what? Sales for me is more traditional. It's showing up to all the, the trade shows. It's going to meet people person uh, to person, face to face, person to person. I'm not even sure that's a thing. And I appreciate that, right? We appreciate that. That traditional approach to getting it done. This is a relationship business and uh, Oscar and I believe it always should be. Um, but it's bigger than that these days. And our seller has been very transparent. She doesn't really get the digital landscape. She is the sales team. And because of that, her knowledge and where she's at with her thoughts to the business, uh, they're sort of in that traditional mindset. She's been doing this for 38 years. And so she's really looking for someone with the energy and the charisma and the enthusiasm to come in and talk about things like social media, digital marketing, uh, what can influencers do for this space? Um, new approaches, new leaderships that will help her see blind spots that she has not because of a, a lack of wherewithal, but just because she's been doing it this way for a while. This is what she knows. She's been vocal. She wants someone to come in and sort of reveal to her uh, where else she could be working. So most immediately, sales. Two additional clients is going to drive revenue. Uh, and she believes to the $10 million top line. And she's been very vocal. She wants a buyer who can come in and kick this to 10 million. She knows it can get there. They were peak 6 million for a while. Um, so we'll talk about that more in a second. Um, we've got some clients in face body as well as private label that are positioned to serve as well. Marketing, we've got 87 SKUs, uh, but we're not doing as much as we could be with it. So we could better leverage our own private line through sample distribution and outsourced marketing channels and networks. Uh, and of course, this is front and center at the heart of everything we do, uh, strategic m and I mentioned the seller has two to three colleagues who are looking to retire, and we have two to three qualified leads already in our funnel that would make sense for an intentional uh, roll up within this space. Um, so that's more the immediate one, two, three. Something else to consider, uh, expansion. We mentioned that we are low volume, high margin. We could capitalize on the other side of that by being high volume, high margin with a new site in either um, Mexico or uh, somewhere uh, overseas, perhaps Australia, which would give us access to the Asian market. Oscar, I love this particular slide. Do you want to walk us through the ecosystem vision? Yes, of course. Thank you, Jason. And just to mention one thing, that the slide um, that you previously showed is aligned to what the seller, uh, to the seller's vision, right? So right. We, we, we both groups right now, we're aligned on, on what can be done. Um, so just uh, to let you guys know a little bit about the, about the whole vision or the strategy, um, is this uh, this ecosystem um, right now? We're working on the on the upper left uh, corner, which is a contract manufacturing company. Uh, but we also have some ideas on um, acquiring um, a lab for product development. One key item is that this company has their own lab for product development. So that's uh, that's a good synergy there. And like uh, Jason was saying, there are two to three interested parties from the seller side and on our side we have uh two another two to three other companies that we've been um, um having conversations with that will be for the niche brands right uh and uh, one, one important thing to mention here is that the companies that we've been talking to they they are between one to three million dollars revenue and they struggle a lot with their contract manufacturers because they, mm -hmm. they place um, a heavy load on MOQs and lead times, right? So that's why Jason is mentioning that we are in a, in a, in a, um, in a very good position to supply those um, or that gap that these uh, small brands have, right? So mm -hmm. this is the overall, the overall vision. And, um, and yeah, and that's, that's what we're after. Love it, love it. And it's that kind of ecosystem thinking that really um, puts an element of flow into what you're looking to build. Financial projections. So uh, if you sort of blend, well, not if you sort of, if you blend the average across the three pillars of what we do, you get this 5.2 growth rate. And we feel that is nice and conservative to really understand that if we were steady state and we were just coming in and, you know, new person in 
the owner's chair, uh, we're going to do all right. Like it is still a good cash flowing business. It is a little bit lean, but that's also a testament to what our seller has done to this point. She's managed to keep it um, out of the red, uh, which in and of itself is, is somewhat of an art. And she has our respect for that. She's such a baddie. It is so cool to talk with her um, in any case. Uh, but part of the real joy of what we get to do is we get to come in and bring these growth visions to life. And that's something extremely uh, salient in the context of this deal. Uh, we at this time are looking at probably three ways to do this. We could come in and make an offer and um, you know see where that gets us, right? It could be annuity, it could be SBA, but our seller has already told us that she has a number and um, she's you know intentionally planning her exit. So something that is appealing is the idea of what we do here in CFE and it's Chris Moore's classic catch 22, right? We see the business and the irony is that these are the sorts of things that we can solve if we are in the business. So that is something we want to consider uh, as we look at how to get her there. Um, the idea that she will want to not only see that higher valuation, uh, but we could work together and have the option to buy the business when we get her to that top line number she's looking for. And this is extremely meaningful uh, on the next slide. So first and foremost, this is all just from the forecast model that Carl has provided us. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a second, but it's just all extrapolated from that. This is forecast A, assuming a 20% growth with the um, sales and marketing components of our growth strategy implemented, which is nice. It brings us back to 5 million top line. But what really tickled me is when I took a look at the plus one acquisition on the next slide and saw where it could potentially get us. Remember what our seller said, I need someone who can make this $10 million company well, lo and behold, look at this. We can actually probably get this to 11 million with the full scope of our growth strategy going across sales, marketing, and a single bolt-on acquisition. And again, this is what we feel is, is somewhat conservative to this point about the numbers. So um, we thought that was- it's, it's Yeah, it's worth to mention, Jason, I didn't say it before, but just yeah. one small business of $1 million, that's just right. 8% of revenue right. increase yeah. um so that's that's a power of, of the bolton yeah yeah really well said all right i will take you folks to the numbers and can you all see the one sheet this is my favorite part of the call because then i get to turn this all over to people who are much smarter than myself uh and we get to get all your feedback and thoughts Either we did it great or we did it poorly, Jason. <laughs> Maybe we lost our internet connection. I don't know. It's just you and I. <laughs> no, I think everybody's just stunned at how awesome you guys are. <laughs> so one thing to mention, like uh, Jason was saying, right? Definitely the revenue is going to the other, in the other direction. We think it's an opportunity. The mod seems to be we think it might be higher uh, like jason said this lady is great she is good at a drop board but we think there she's struggling a little bit more uh, yeah. regardless of that um one thing that called our attention is how she managed their mar her, her margins it's not it's not common to see that when when with a declining revenue that the owner for a small business is able to support the margins um, so it's a little bit, uh, a lot of variation, little, little variation, but she always managed to stay in, in the greens. So that's, that's, uh, that speaks discipline uh, from what we can see. James, we got a hand raised. My buddy. Um, love the space, um, uh, chemical formulation um blending packaging great space with the right markets um y'all taking this this really nice company 
with all of y'all's expertise. Um, 10, 10 mil is only the beginning uh, upside. Y'all, y'all, y'all will be able as creative as y'all are, and Jason with his with the creative abilities that you have. Um, again, it, it's you like I like we discussed the other day. You can make, you can pack, you can blend and package everything in the world, but if you can't sell it, then you're more broke than the man who never Guy started. Carcass. So, so I, I really, really am excited for y'all. This is going to be a great. Great opportunity, great opportunity. But just okay. watch your cost and watch your again your raw materials. You just just make sure that all your um, and your regulatory. She's kept this thing profitable in a California okay. market in this industry. Um, I commend her because the regulatory side of it, trying to stay in compliance, uh, is is huge in this. So uh, I, I commend her. Y'all got a great business here. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Appreciate that, James. And, and uh, again, thank you for all the insight you operated on uh, on Monday's call too. You got some real sharp uh visibility to this. So thank you. All right. I see I thought there was some Josh said why was Josh mm -hmm. said why was EBITDA so high in twenty twenty two? And then why were ad backs so low in twenty twenty three? Yeah, that's a great question. We've got a follow up with her tomorrow to talk through more of uh, she was pretty hesitant to give the numbers. Um, and now we understand why. Right. She it, it's it's something we we see uh, fairly often. Um, but now that we have this sort of timeline, we've got more context to go back and ask, OK, at what point did that client you mentioned drop off is that what i'm seeing now that i've got this sort of you know view of how things have progressed and increased uh similar to your point uh Pritchard, uh why did revenue drop in half in two years you know i uh, we did talk about that a little bit um the clients uh she lost two of her key clients uh they've been with her a while uh, and it speaks to the customer concentration that we believe we can you know address uh, if you were to come in the business, um, let me see, but yeah, those are all great questions. Uh, I'm definitely taking note of those and we're going to meet with her tomorrow to talk more about, um, some of the, the details financially is, uh, all right. That was Josh. And then Ben, you got your hand up. And I was, um, I love the space first of all, cause, uh, Product development is is super cool and it's fun to work on. But I was actually just I was just talking to somebody else uh, on, on who is a protege who has a similar business um, about formulation for like a natural toothpaste. Um, oh, are nice. you, you guys confident? Cool. I mean, other than I know you guys can run businesses well. How solid is their product development department? Um, as far as like going forward or is she, I know she's big on the sales and the relationships, but yeah. How's, how's the back, like the, the production and, um, part of the business or is everybody on board to stay? Do they know she's selling? Yeah. Yeah. So they, those are all great questions. So they are not aware she is selling, but the team is strong. When we asked her about, you know, tell us, walk us through your USPs. Uh, there were three and the first being product development. She's exceptionally proud of the team she has in place that allows her to innovate in the space that allows her to really address uh, private labeling, uh, excuse me, uh, custom formulation needs for her clients. So um, I feel like, I, I mean, we're hoping for a site visit sooner than later uh, and excited about that. But uh, I feel like there are good leading indicators that the right team is in place to address a lot of this growth. She speaks very well to the way in which she intentionally empowers folks to just really be their best. She's a a really cool leader figure. Um, so again, I feel like that should stack up well for us. Uh, obviously a lot more yeah. to discover. 
Is that helpful? Did it answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, also, on on the uh, seller notes, your biggest threat being the market supply chains, etc. Is that do they manufacture here in the states, and then but the but the materials come from elsewhere, or hmm. where's the majority of their manufacturing coming in? How how are you gonna address supply chain issues? Yeah, Oscar. Yeah, I mean that, that's or... also a, a very good question. Yeah. Um, so actually, we're going to have our second uh, meeting tomorrow with the seller, and all those questions are are key. And certainly, for us to move forward, we really need to do a an on-site visit, right? Um, so I'm expecting to to be able to book something tomorrow uh, or start uh, guiding the conversation towards that. Now, regarding the um, the supply chain. Um, I mean, definitely, as an ops guy, I can tell you, we must have at least a dual source, right? So regardless if the economy is booming or if it's going down, you better have that. So that's that's going to be one of the items that we need to consider for the transfer of value, right? Uh, the dependency on, on your suppliers. So that's that's still something on, on our action item list. Awesome. I, I think, you know, this this has good potential and you don't want to buy a perfect business you want to buy one you can improve so this is super mm, cool exactly yeah good job guys although i i don't know if someone offered me a perfect business i'd think about it i i, I definitely consider it all right uh for the right price for the right price yeah for the right price yeah for the right price for sure gerardo Hi right, guys, thank you. you. Uh, congratulations i i love this space i love the private label and the white label thing um my only some thoughts that i have is uh, one um you have to think about other sources of volume or other sources of revenue i think potentially you're thinking a little bit unilateral on this thing there's many other ways that you can grow this business without having to depend on big clients you know potentially you can build uh smaller entrepreneur brands you know and that type of thing Again, we mm -hmm. can talk about it later. Um, the, the, another question that I have, you were talking about Mexico and you know, I'm from Mexico originally and usually, you know, Mexico, Colombia and all that provides uh, high margins. But if you're talking that you already have 58, 55, 53 gross margins, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know how much you're going to gain from building a plant there. Potentially you can, you can hire a third party manufacturer down there I know one of the biggest uh, private label producers in Colombia. So mm -hmm. potentially it's more about finding a supplier there than building a plant or establishing a plant. Um, yeah. and, I, and I think you potentially uh, need just strategic thinking behind, okay, how do we grow this thing beyond the current set you know of, of clients that she has or or mm -hmm. target clients that she has because i think there's there's a lot more to give on this side even mlms you know and i mean they, mm -hmm. they, i mean the thing the, the opportunity is great you just have to really sit down and say okay thinking out of the traditional where else can i grow with this you know that that's sort of just my thoughts, and you know I've done I've done these things before, and if you want to reach out, I will be more than glad to talk to you. But I think it's it's more on the yeah, strategic thinking than just unilateral thinking on the same path that she's taken so far. That's yeah, I, I think it's really well said. Yeah, I, I yeah, I agree that there is. Um, oh shoot, I lost it. I uh, this is all somewhat admittedly surface level to this point right the the opportunity is really to get in and move beyond to your point being unilateral the things that have been done the things that have been proposed because that's part of what she was relaying to us as one of the concerns right i've been doing it 38 years i need you to expose me to things that i haven't yet considered and part of that is that deep and meaningful conversation where you really pull it apart where you're able to listen so um I think that's a really good point, and I appreciate you saying that. Uh, and the only thing I didn't get very, very clear, if she wants mm -hmm. a partner, if she wants to sell part of it, exit, I mean, that's the only thing that I didn't understand fully. Yeah, that's a great one. And I think 
she lacks that clarity as well, which is where we have as protege a real advantage because we come in with that expertise to not only just tell her what we know about this vertical, this space, but how this all works. And we have a lot of latitude here to suggest here are the three scenarios and gauge her thoughts. Uh, I think the thing that stuck with me was on our first call, she opened up and said, I am strategically planning my exit. And I love that because that means we can talk about things like CFE. We can position the cash at close she would get now versus the difference in you know taking a full annuity across time. She's going to be able to see us illustrate what we intend to do through m a alone and understand that ah, i may want a second bite of the apple so i i think it's going to be up to us to educate as we we often say and i think we've got a lot of latitude to do that uh, with this particular opportunity so we will see that's a great point though all right victor Hey, hi guys. Uh, great, great presentation. Um, my question is, what will be the uh, plan of execution? Are you going to do a leverage buyout? Are you going to do partnering? Or are you going to be doing an uh, annuity deal with her? What will be your plan? Yeah, yeah. I so you don't think... have a price yet, so I know. Yeah, that's right. I think just the way things are going, um, and, you know, uh, we were talking about this as well, it's going to be a meaningful conversation to discuss those options. I think the way Oscar and I are looking at it most immediately, a CFE is probably making the most sense um, to start with the option to buy once we get in um, and grow it a bit in that right direction. I also think that, you know, that's what she is going to be most open to. The real, the two real options that I see are going to be appealing to are that higher valuation, which would lead us more towards an annuity if we're able to educate her properly as to why that is the best for her, your number. Um, and then we'll introduce this number, annuity, and we'll see if he with you along the way to get you there. I, in our heads, that's sort of you know the, the progression to this point. Okay. But the nice thing is it good. really speaks to yeah, it speaks to like the art of creative deal making, which is exciting for us. It's a lot more than going in and just saying, hey, SBA 80, 90, uh, we'll go. There's a lot of room for that really rich conversation. So yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Go for it. <laughs> James. Yes. Uh, one lot of thought, and Ben hit the nail on the head, uh, you have uh, one of the most important parts of this after actually sales and your production and uh, quality control and all of that is, is your product development, uh, mm -hmm. staying on top of that. What you could do too is, is, let, is it, with the meet, social media expertise that you have, and that the team has and can pull together. What you may want to think about is is coming up is is broaden your product line some. It's it wouldn't take to do a lateral move, say into natural home cleaning products or something like that. Setting up a line for that would not be hard to do, and a lot of right. the components are already there. And then turn around and and that way you're not in direct competition with your contracted customers you know, and mm -hmm. fall in and create your own product line. And as dynamic a marketer as you are, you can sell the snot out of it and and then turn around and set it up on a subscription model and sell. I mean, look what the actress, the actress did. I mean, they, she, she's not, has no idea what she's doing in the chemical business and her, if she put together a team, set up a home cleaning, uh, chemical cleaning business with uh, natural, all natural chemicals and sold it for over a billion dollars. 
uh, the mm -hmm. Alba, Jessica Alba. Yeah, and so, company. yeah, so you could leverage that. And then, uh, and, 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 and I mean, that, that would get, I believe that could, that could, and then you could look at other types of product lines as well. But yeah. one thing is, is you have got to stay on top of your product development. And because yeah. it's just like in the space that I used to be in, the surfactant technology that, that was there when I left, when I sold our company, it, it, it's compared that to today. It's like comparing a nineteen a nineteen eighty Camaro to a night uh, Camaro today. So did somebody somebody staying on top of that because because it, it, the technology is changing so quick, even in chemicals, and and a lot of the stuff is still valid today. A lot of your old formulations and old stuff, but but man, these some of these surfactants they have now are amazing, and they didn't have them when I was around. So mm -hmm. and you got surfactants in just about everything. So yeah. I really encourage you because that you 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 guys have got a diamond in the rough here. If it's handled right, you got a diamond in the rough big time. Yep. Yeah. Those are some great thoughts. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, James. Anthony Millar. And then I've got Dave and then I've got uh, Lenny. Hey, Jason, just as a heads up, yes, do, you, do you still need time for your next presentation? Uh, yeah, or we can. I, I don't yeah. want to cut the conversation cord. I, I can be back for the next presentation. I just want to make sure you have time to present your next one. That's all. So, yeah, I'll be yeah, really. No, I appreciate it, but I, I don't. Yeah, okay, cool. I don't want to cut these folks off. No worries. Right, I appreciate well, it. My, my only question is, do you have any contingency? I know she, if I understood you correctly, that they lose a couple of clients and that's why the revenue has dipped so dramatically. As she lose another client, do you have any contingency for that? Because it seems like it would still be going in the wrong direction. Right. And no, not to this point, that's going to take some more conversation to understand a little bit deep with a little deeper knowledge, the range <laughs> of products across the three pillars and then the range of her clientele uh, to sort of pull the thread of, you know, uh, that initial customer analysis question, right? Like what, walk me through your customer concentration. You lost two. If you lost another, uh, is that going to cause you to lose sleep at night? Um, and I think it's a great point is right now I'm not aware of what contingency is in place should someone else walk out. And another thing that's going to be really valuable to understand is with a bit more candid conversation, why did those two leave, right? Like what is your understanding of why those relationships and those accounts left? It's a great consideration. Dave. Hey, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah, that's you. That's the first thing I was going to touch on is I, I know you're going to do a deep dive into uh, why they left. Um, it's two customers. Did they both leave in 2023? Because there was a, you know, in 2022 had a drop in revenue of 600K and then mm -hmm. 2023 had a revenue of 1.4 mil. Um, mm -hmm. Is one one customer and the other, the other customer? Um, yep. Certainly find out what actual percentage. Uh, it's it, mm -hmm. overall, it's a 50% drop in revenue overall. What percentage was those two customers? Because if it's smaller than 50%, you, there's a bigger problem or other customers, you know, the, uh, you know, did, did a product have a bad experience? Did they ruin their brand? It's, it's yeah. very important. Yeah. Was it a QC issue? One of the things she mentions is one of her you know pillars of pride is the qc they do but you have to ask did yeah. something happen uh because 38 years in the game i mean it, it for sure possible. i know you'll do that anyway i just wanted to point that out and, and negative ar um are they taking prepayment for sales and if so make sure you factor that into the cash that you receive and that yeah. they don't strip all that cash out and then leave you to fulfill product that they already received the money for that's right. probably obvious to you, but that's pretty much my only two comments. Thanks. Yeah, great comments. I really appreciate that. Lenny, what's going on, buddy? Hey, how are you? Uh, as always, Jason, awesome presentation. Um, 
I'm not going to take a long time um, because a lot of the a lot of great points from uh, proteges about customer concentration, um, kind of dovetailing customer concentration and deal structure. One of the things that's done in the PE world when there is a great company and there is customer concentration is heavy, 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 heavy earn out. So um, you can do a deal structure and I love to do equity rollover, especially because it sounds like she needs, you know, um, new blood, but she, her passion is you know, product development and QC. Um, you could do a combination of equity rollover. Um, that also gets her the second bite out of the apple and, you know, uh, puts her on a clear plan or strategy for exit. And then combine that with heavy duty earn out um, to mitigate the customer concentration concerns. And it would drastically reduce your exposure and debt service. Those are both great options. Those are, that's a heavy hitting one, two combo. I like that. I appreciate that.